Konnichiwa, mina san. Anton in Japan here, and welcome to Central Tokyo and my now 87-year-old abandoned house. It's not so much abandoned anymore, but I know you've been asking for it, and here I am to give it to you. Breakdown of all the fees involved in renovating my now 87-year-old house in Tokyo. You've been asking for it. Here I am to teach you and share my thoughts and my experiences with you. If you haven't read my book already, Free Houses in Japan, available on Amazon, about my stories renovating this house and my other renovation projects. I have a few exciting projects that will happen very soon, and before they start, I was thinking about wrapping my Sangenjaya house up, the entire project for you, before starting this new video journey and sharing all these new experiences with you in English with a higher level of videography and editing than this house. This house was made entirely in Japanese and I've spent a lot of time and effort into recreating these videos into English and it hasn't been ultimate. The shorts have been working well but the longer format videos was already shot in Japanese but the new project will be shot entirely in English from start till finish. I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned, I haven't announced the project yet, but you will see very, very soon. All right, let's get to it. All the costs involved in renovating this house, let's go. So the previous owners left everything behind, making the house incredibly cheap, because I had to take care of the trash disposal. And to get rid of trash in Japan is very expensive. The first companies that came here, they quoted me over $10,000. I don't remember the exact number but they quoted me an insane amount of money just to take away the trash before the renovation even started. My friend Paris introduced me to a great company in Kanagawa. In the end of my book, I introduced the same company again. They only charged me about 250,000 yen to take care of all the trash, sorting it meticulously and throwing it away from me. Even the butsudan, the altar on the second floor, they made some prayer and disposed of it. That was about 250,000 yen. Then we have the demolition. So I started demolition and all the waste, I put it here in the entrance. So demolition, get all the trash and gathering it in a, in a space where it's easy to get rid of. It's easy to load it into a truck. You go and rent a truck, it's 5,000 yen each time. And then I had to go to Futago Tamagawa, about 20 minutes away from here to get rid of it. They charge about seven, 8,000 yen per cubic of wood. Then concrete is more expensive, steel is more expensive. It, it, it depends on what you're disposing of. And getting rid of all the building trash here cost me about 500,000 yen. But I did most of the work. And to hire a company would have been about three times, if not more, the price. We're in central Tokyo, it could be cheaper elsewhere in Japan. Concrete slab under the house with uh, chemical screws into the foundation. That was about 600,000 yen. I didn't do that myself. Mazuda-san came and did it. It took about a week. The house here is on, located on a tiny, tiny road. And instead of hiring a guardman, they, we, we carried me and Fukamizu and Kazuki-san together with Mazuda-san pouring in the concrete here. Obviously, we used rebar as well. Uh, to make the entire structure stronger. Termite, termites, termites, termites. So uh, that wasn't actually that expensive. I think it was about 500 bucks in total for all the equipment and all the doku. Poison, poison. Carpenters uh, to remove the pillars to uh, make it safe for earthquake was about one and a half million yen. That was how I got to know Kazuki. We built this staircase together and we did a lot of fun things together. Thank you so much Kazuki for teaching me a lot about Japanese carpentry. Wood shock. I built this house when wood was the most expensive, I think. It was right in the end of the COVID pandemic. I spent about 1.7 million yen on wood. About $150,000 for a hot water boiler and about 300,000 yen for various tools, screws, nails, you name it. Everything just adds up. Electricity, my local Denkia-san cost me about 500,000 yen. Plumbing, you know I had some problems with the plumbing as well as with the first carpenter. But plumbing cost me about 400,000 yen. Paris' father, Kevin, helped me a lot. Thank you so much, Kevin, for that. 
air conditioning and toilets. I made some friends with some very nice people in Saitama and Chiba, Steve, who are reclaiming old toilets and air conditioners. They get it from uh, hotels and uh, ryokans that went bankrupt. They buy up old toilets and buy up old uh, air conditioners. Uh, good for the environment. These air conditioners, I could buy them at like a 75% off. They're working great. Thank you so much, Steve. You helped me a lot. Permits and re-registry. So, I have a hotel license for this house. And getting this hotel license wasn't the easiest. I didn't really know how to approach these things. Each area of Japan is different and each municipality has different rules. For example, in the toilet, you need to have a separate wash basin. Even though a Japanese toilet usually have a wash basin on top, who kind of recycles the water. In my area, Setagayaku, you need to have a separate wash basin. And I didn't know that, so I had to add that separately later on. Also, when I bought this house, it was registered as a one-story, 36-square-meter house. But obviously, it's a two-story house. Uh, it was about 90 square meters, but I did the beautiful fukinuke. As That's why the first floor here is so light and bright and beautiful. So by doing this fukinuke, I lost a lot of floor space. It's still about 80 square meter big, which is kind of huge in Japanese standards, especially in this area of Tokyo. So getting the hotel license and then re-register it with the municipality. A new fridge, new, it was a used fridge. I paid about 50,000 yen. Tiles in the kitchen, about 120,000 yen. Thank you so much, Thai Life, for helping me out with this. The kitchen in total, IKEA, obviously. We build kitchens with the cabinets in Sweden. We, you, I think you do that in the US as well. The normal way of doing it in Japan is to buy a unit kitchen. You just buy it as a big unit and then poof, you just, yeah, you just put it there. And my measurements here didn't really fit. It, it wouldn't really look good with a unit kitchen as well. On, and I wanted to keep these Scandinavian style. It's a Japan house. The most expensive thing was the dishwasher. <laughs> That's about 40% of the house. I also put in an oven that I bought from Yahoo Auction. Uh, not very common in a Japanese house. That was about 50,000 yen. The range hood as well was 30,000 yen. I built the cover on my own because I didn't really like the covers that was on the market here. Beautiful. So in total, about 500,000 yen for the kitchen. Flooring as well, very important. I paid about 300,000 yen for this flooring. It's actually Swedish oak flooring. I found it on an outlet in Chiba. It's hardwood floor, it's not engineered wood. Uh, this will last forever. It's beautiful, you can feel that it's real wood when you're walking on top of it. Insulation was about 200,000 yen. Japanese houses aren't really that insulated and no central heating. I put in the new air conditioners that Steve recycled for me from a bankrupt hotel in Chiba. And I also put in underfloor heating. That was about 200,000 yen, all electrical. You can do gas as well. It's a little bit more complicated and I don't wanna deal with gas. And I had to pay about 200,000 yen for Tokyo Gas to come and put in new pipes and then connect it to the gas meter and the new hot water boiler that my local lumber sold to me. As you can see, in the kitchen I also have this washing machine. Japanese washing machines are usually top loaded, like in Italy. I wanted this house to be Japandi style and I also had a dedicated spot in the kitchen. For some reason I never checked the height. Obviously you see that the worktop is about 95 centimeters tall. A Japanese kitchen is usually not taller than 90 and they usually don't have the washing machine in the kitchen. So I had a pretty hard time in finding a washing machine that would fit in the kitchen. And I only had two models to choose between. I bought this Deco one on Yahoo Auction for 88,000 yen including shipping. I was about the new windows from Yahoo Auction. Uh, very cheap. Uh, on the other side there as well. Redoing all the toilets wasn't that expensive. New paint. Redoing the rooms up there was about 100,000 yen. Plus tatami mats. New shojis from my local tatami guy. Namigai san. Uh, that was about 180,000 yen. That's pretty fun. You got a book, like a portfolio, like, and then you chose. Oh, I want this 
shoji paper. Oh, I want this fusuma. And I want the tatami with this hiri on the side. You could choose the colors and it was pretty creative. And he also complimented me that that this is the most Japanese room he's seen in this area in a very long time. The rooms on the second floor. Thank you very much, Namigai-san. So in total, everything just adds up. You have a 500,000 yen in budget and then in the end you always overspend. I've told you this in Business Insider before, but I think I spent about $55,000 in making this house nice. From start till finish, all licensed, all ready. But I've spent my know-how. I know how to do this. I use my design sense. I work together with my friends. I'm very grateful for my friends who's been keeping me company and helping me. Because this is not really a one-man job. And I've spent over a thousand hours into making this house look nice. And now I'm a super host on Airbnb. The house looks beautiful. I'm very proud of this. It's incredibly fun to see guests enjoying their stay in Tokyo here. Meeting the guests, people have these big blue exciting eyes. Oh, we're gonna do Tokyo. We're gonna have a great time in Tokyo. People have told me that if you didn't do DIY and if you didn't have this kind of sense, if you didn't have the know-how Anton, this will cost you at least $200,000 to renovate a house like this. So I paid in my time and I paid with my love and I paid by spending time with my friends. It wasn't always easy, uh, but if it's too easy, where's the fun, right? This house and this content creation journey has really changed my life, I'm not gonna lie. 1.7 million subscribers, 200 million views. Daily Mail, Business Insider, Global, Vogue, Tokyo Weekender, TV4, Daily Express. It's been insane and you guys have really changed my life. I used to be a model and DIY freak and when this house was done I needed a little break and I started making content and my life has literally changed. And now I'm ready to take on a new DIY renovation project here in Tokyo. It's another house similar to this and I will start making content in English from day one. And I'm very excited about it. If you haven't already, please read my book available on Amazon. And if you're thinking about buying a house in Japan, please send info at akiaacademy.com message. I have a business partner who's specializing in Akia investments and helping people, foreigners and Japanese, for the past decade in localizing these houses. Usually in the countryside, Shiba, Kanagawa, Saitama, Ibaraki. You have seen some charts in my book and now we've teamed up together to help people buy Akia in Japan. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you very soon.